Yeah. Actually, you know what? I, I kind of don't understand because you know this is going to happen as a competitor outside of this. You know this is going to happen. I don't care if this is your drop spot. Like, what are you doing here? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, sure, if you want to drop here in the heats where neither of these teams are in there, go for it. But you're, you've said it, though. You, you literally hit it home. You know this is going to happen. Why do you think these TTV streamers are here, right? With that, with, with that in their names. Well, what could the reason be? <laughs> I'm just saying it, it, it's it's it could be not clout. That's what the I'm thing. They to don't say. own it. They do not own it. I, yeah, 100. They don't own it. But it doesn't matter what they, whatever. Who is you know? That? I don't know. I couldn't see it. This is an aerial it's, fight. Yeah. What the heck? He just chased him out. Anonymous mode. It could be scoped. <laughs> it could be Tifu. Did the skins match? Wow, they had good loot too. Oh my Heavy sniper God. and minigun. That is the tiniest and it's Brutus's. We'll find out who it is with this confirmation, Elam, when it happens because I don't think this guy can survive even with a launch pad. It's a half pad. That has to be T4 scoped. Yeah. I mean, someone to be able to half pad that fast, I don't think it's. Oops, Rex. I'm sorry. Maybe just half of one. But I literally don't care what's going on anywhere else. I need to know <laughs> how this pans out. Did we try to hit the pad and get away? No. We're like, I don't know, I have two builds. Okay, I have... Tifu getting hit off 125 meters away. That was an instant finish. That means it had to have been scoped. These guys took out earlier on. Do you have white heels? That or Isis POV was kind of delayed. Here's scoped actually. Yeah, that was a delayed POV. Yeah. And this is scoped see, with the half pad. It's scoped with the half pad, and you can see Tifu's card is where AV had yeah. lasered him out the sky. So 100% is him. Scope still alive. Scope still making it out. He's going to try to get in the bush and chill for a bit so he can heal up before trying to move on. And the fight's still going on. Oh, shit. Scope is waiting. <laughs> He's pissed. Oh, this is it's oh, fresh. My what? God. Is this a 15? It is! I told it you! It must be! Yeah. You were right! There's another pad being oh, taken. I'm I'm padding. Padding. What is this build? What? It's a pad for positioning in a zone that's coming on an ice mountain. Before seconds locked in, and AV picks it up in five seconds. Like it's an AI. I haven't seen Thresh this entire FNCS. <laughs> what? I'm not even joking. Not even building. Possibly has a chance for a beam. This might be the only chance if these guys slow down, but they won't. If there's anyone that needs that box item, it has to be scoped. The worst possible thing about this is just the fact that he has a great pump. If he could find something a little bit better, especially attack somewhere, minimal green or blue, I think this game could easily work out for him, especially with the harpoons, but... In zone, but damaged, hurt. More overall mats, but worse overall position to get focused. I mean, it made sense to have that big fight against Thrush and Bank. Don't think the boom mm -hmm. Off of the side of that. <laughs> All the power weapons. Sculpt is still alive! Okay, definitely a worse position than AV. But he is going for a fight, but he has a white pump! No, no way my man has a white pump. So sad. It seems like he kind of has a free rotation, though. Yeah, that he does. But I don't think he can get any sort of impact with a white pump. <laughs> I mean, Chap started his off last game with just an AR beam. He's baiting his own loot. He needs to hit the shot. Oh, it's not going to be possible at all. I was going to say he might not pull the trigger, but he does. Now only six attempts left with that heavy sniper, six harpoons as well. 
to grab off loot. If he just tries to survive, looks for, I don't know, not a third party, but a third, a third looting opportunity, just being one of the harpooners. Yeah. That's the only way. Carries for night and rogue shark gar. Ooh. Wow. There we go. Oh, mythic gun is yeah. Fucking Tommy gun. He can't get the loot, but he gets the point. And being able to just convert this into some little amount of placement points is massive when it comes down to it, because they will pop off potentially. Although, depending on how the grotto continues to play out, maybe that's not so much of a potential after all. But still, that's what we're looking at from a team like Zayt and Sa from another team. You know, it's being able to put these shamble games into something, at least something, and then using the games that aren't shambles to completely convert and make it a big one. It's a full package. Shark and Knight need to find a way Hopefully not get sniped out of the air. I think this is the zone where they can actually move over. We see one perspective of launch patterns up in height, but then we see Hogman and Endpen control it with their builds now connected. They're going to be moving forward back to their own other base as well. While duels like Knight and Rogue Shark move out, that was a weird hop, but we're going to be seeing a lot of that with the server performance currently. Looking over the entire server, it's all hard mats, and without a minigun, it's going to be very hard to crack. Just 50 AR. It takes about 10 to go through a floor. More to go through both the pyramid and a floor. Yeah. I don't think Hogman has a wave to actually get some eliminations here, but they, no. these guys can Stay pressure alive. down. Really yeah, I, I think yeah, I best really case scenario yeah, for them is just keep this tarp, keep this tarp healthy, maintain high ground for as long as possible for a free ride to placement. And then from there, possibly start to use what weaponry you still have left. But there's very few chances right now for a pop off game, even though this looks so good. Hogman and Enpen, they had a crazy clutch performance in week one to qualify for Sunday Finals, but didn't perform that well. And so right now they're sitting most likely qualified in series points. We never know what could happen. Of course, playing in the Sunday Finals this week is probably enough. As long as you keep a dual partner the whole way through, it helps out so much when you don't, that's when things change. Everything here has to be strategic though from Hogman and Enpen going downwards luckily and hopefully not getting overtaken by an RPG combination, a uh, grappler as well. A combination of both two. And it looks like I, Enpen has an SMG and Hogman with the AR so they're splitting that ammo pretty efficiently already. And now here come the placements. 400 wood, so much time still to be able to spend up here. Connor's still in endgame with Waffles, both alive on a mid-ground layer. In my box, trying to get in my box, trying to get in my box. Good. This is where defense is key and synergy will triumph. Staying together, having mats, moving together as well is huge. Good catch and not falling on a launch pad. Waffles seems kind of disconnected from where Connor wants to go. Kind of delayed reactions to the tarp. Connor is making quick calls, but now they're going to be faced onto two different people on a wall. Connor Yikes. making the wrong decision two points away or two places away from placement points. They tune back in with height, and they're looking to end the game. So unfortunate you go on a fully built metal wall you can't see on the other side, and on the other side for them is a full duo now, Hogman and Edpen. They still have a launch pad if they want to decline very, very fast, and still so many materials, but a grappler now in play. But like we saw in EU, not really going for heights, more so just trying to survive for longer for these clutch moments. Hogman and Empen are still hanging on. Not by a threat at all. They have a lot of mats to operate. They have the combo weapons as well with the heavy sniper and the shotgun to follow up. Hogman actually getting the wall, looking for a shot in. His cone actually, I think, dropped down by Enpen. He can edit through, or it was shot out. Good teamwork right there. Looking for a shot down below, looking to end off the game possibly faster than before because there is an RPG in play. The zone's getting smaller. That impact will be so much greater. There's a bandage cannon as well, and I don't think these guys have any heals whatsoever. So it needs to end right here, right now. But there's too much of a delay. This is bad for height. And Pen is finding no ways of pressure at the moment. Hogman is just trying to play heal game, but with siphons, it might not be possible. Now the zone ticks in. It's the last second. Everyone's blue. Hogman drops down, looks for shots. The attack is there. The combinations of height and low ground pressure bring it all the way home in game two for Hogman and then Pen. 
in mid ground, low ground that game. We had a big POV of height. Here's Perplexity and Nanolite, a team that needs to qual today and this week. Yeah, because we're not quite sure whether that Nanolite and Vivid duo is done for. Gage in the end game as well. There's Dubs and Mega. They're trying to get in on Perplexity, and they almost do. They continue to follow up. Now Gage on this wall as well. Perplexity in a tough spot to be able to get away from this. Icy. No, sorry. These are all earlier in the replay, so don't look at the kill feed at all. Finally, I think Perplexy is down and out. There's the grappler on Divine, still landing at the shark. Now we switch over to another duo. No, nope, it's going to be Divine's dead body. There's Connor Rio fan. I think possibly, yes, outplacing the real Connor Rio in game two. There's six duels left alive. We saw Connor go down in 12th place, so this will be double the placement available he needs to survive just one more time but they're on the back of Grand matisse and mikey gets a shot off on one cutting down that duo by half but Grand matisse does survive to see the next and end of the day metas is looking for shots as well can he find them and i think this is where we start to see the game easily thin out this is vexy fire and metas there's the finish Ooh. onto Grand matisse a nice shot a quick one and down below it's is that furious again yes it is furious again and with his game one performance He's certainly now going to be in first place and possibly even a convincing one. There's the finish from Enpen onto Meta. It's a good game from those guys. Five eliminations and the second place, but... Be Furious RR and Lil Baby Gonzo, 27 points, no wins. Who needs them when you're that consistent low ground and you pop off time after time? Wow, 27 points. Gap between Megan Dubs, who won their first game and still...